let the memes begin. No, Bree, why? Welcome to the Father Stage. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Don't forget that the Father Stage is on locals.com. So click the link in the video description to support our work. And thank you, folks, in advance. I do appreciate it. I have with me an interesting guest, Jeremy Hamley. Hamley, better known as the Quartering. He is an internet personality and content creator jeremy thanks for coming on uh thanks for thanks for ha- having me i've always uh i always thought one day our pals would cross so i'm glad that we can share our time today right on man and so what is the quartering uh you mean like uh where does the name what what does the name mean yes, or right yeah so i thought it was it's it's um kind of a reference to being drawn and quartered in that The way when I started the channel, it was about the way media kind of turned from being about entertainment to pulling people in different directions when things we liked suddenly became became politicized and things got torn apart. So it was kind of built kind of off that loosely. Uh, Jeremy, what's important to you personally? What's important to you? Um, Family. liberty. Uh, and probably fairness, I think probably in, in general, you know, su- being super general, but yeah, I mean, a lot of things go under that umbrella, but it seems like everything seems to get boiled down. A lot of the arguments, uh, that, that I'm engaged in, uh, comes from a position of things being unfair, yeah. um, unevenly applied or, 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 you know, something like that. When people say fairness, other than all the, the the laws apply to everybody equally. You know, you do a crime, you do the time, right? No matter what the color is. I don't mm. know what they mean by fairness. Life is what you make it. You know, if you don't mm. get up and do what you need to do in life, then you're going to have to kind of whatever you put out. How do people expect fairness? And what do they mean by that? Well, I think when I'm talking about it, sometimes you look at... Uh, um. The modern uh, political people talk about equality, maybe a better word, like they have a quality of opportunity or a quality of outcome. Right. And for me, life isn't always fair. You're not going to get your fair shake for it. That's that's certainly um, true. But when I talk about it, I'm just talking about from a way that like, for example, in social media, the way the rules are applied. Yeah. Just like you said, look, if you're right, left, center, whatever. You, you, if there's a set of rules, you get banned, for example, from Twitter, then it should be applied evenly. When it's not applied evenly, then it becomes an issue, which is something that, you know, I've been fighting against for years now with yeah. based social media platforms. So I understand that things don't always shake out, the, you know, fairly for people. But I think when things are being enforced, it should be, it should be fair. Yeah. The one thing I have noticed, and speaking of unfairness in this country, is that in America today, white men, especially if they're Christian men, they get it worse, but they're outwardly being falsely accused, being discriminated against, uh, call all kinds of names, racist, and things like that. Hmm. How did that happen, and why do white men put up with that? I think that not all white men do, but I right. do think that there are some that do. And I think at least from my perspective, when it started was maybe 10, 12 years ago, it kind of became like, uh, not just accepted, but encouraged to disparage white men. Yeah. I don't, I don't think anybody's above a joke. You can make jokes about white guys. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but that, that wasn't really the case. You couldn't make jokes at other people's expenses. You still can't. Um, and I'm not sure 
exactly when it started, but I remember when it first affected me. Um, I was a part of a, a, a card game uh, community back in 2015 or 16. And I started seeing some of this rhetoric come, out, come down the lines about first time I've ever heard of cis straight male, <laughs> yeah. this new words, you know? Yeah. And people were saying that white men should basically shut up and let everyone else speak because a bunch of white people uh, run companies and therefore all white people are bad. And I thought it was really weird when it was like, well, wait a minute, <laughs> uh, we apply this logic that like, just because somebody is, is black and they do something bad, that doesn't mean that all black people are bad. Why are we saying this about white people in particular men and straight men? Um, but it just kind of became this accepted thing and it, it was really weird. And I think this is probably 2015, like around when Trump was running, it became really mainstream. Right. And I'm not exactly sure what drove it, but I think it's why Trump won. You know, that was white men pushing back yes. against this. You know, when you had Hillary Clinton say, oh, well, half of his people are, or remember the basket of deplorables, yeah. racist, uh, whatever, bigots, whatever, whatever. I think people are like, wait a minute. No, I'm not. And you know what? Screw you. I'm going to go vote for Trump now. Um, so I think it kind of, I hope that they learned some lesson there, but it, hasn't really seemed to go go away. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, 32 years ago now when I first started out. And mm. at that time, they were calling white people racist and they were accusing white people of holding blacks back and that kind of stuff. And I was mm. saying, I said to white people then, y'all better speak up because if you give in to these people, they're going to see you as cowards and they're just going to make it worse for you. And the white folks, I used to write about it and everything, man. And white people didn't speak up then because I know that black people are not suffering because of white people at all. They're suffering because of not having fathers and mothers in the home to lead them in the right way. And they've been lied to by the so-called civil rights movement and their leaders. So I would tell the white people, speak up. At least say, no, it's not true. And then whites didn't speak up for the most part. Not all, not all, not all. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it was weird because people were so afraid of being called racist Yeah, that they were afraid to even defend themselves against the label because they were, you know, they were thought now here, here's, you know, I've interacted with when I live in Wisconsin in the Midwest there, I went to a high school with, uh, there's like 1200 students in my graduating class and two of them were black. And so when I started hearing about like white people oppressing black people, I'm like, I've never even seen a black person where I live. How am I oppressing them? Right. How am I, I don't really understand any of this stuff. Um, you know, certainly I think at its core, individual responsibility is still a thing that is ignored. We saw this with, you know, everybody, um, you know, fighting the power by going to steal big screen TVs. I didn't really understand how that, you know, really did anything, but the media was like, oh, well, this is because of, you know, years of this or that. Well, no, no, no. These people are stealing stuff. Right. They're breaking the law. They should be arrested. Yeah. And you had corporations like Target just came out yesterday and said, oh, we lost $400 million last year due to organized theft. Gee, you know, I wonder why. Yeah. Every time I, you know, during that last summer, you saw people just going into the store and stealing all the, you know, TVs and all this stuff. And, the, the company would just virtue signal and say, oh, well, well, we understand. Well, you know, maybe people should be arrested for, 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 for do, um, if people had consequences, hopefully they would learn from them. Right. Not everyone does, yeah. but hopefully I don't understand why you think letting people, uh, be bad of all colors by not enforcing laws teaches them to follow the law. Right. I, don't, I don't know what how that works. Mess. Yeah. And, and then they started the knockout games where they were going around, the blacks were going around knocking out white people. Nothing yeah. was said. And Asians, too. Yeah, that, that's Asians, a big, too. It's yeah. funny, man. Blacks would be knocking out the Asians, but when mm -hmm. the media report on it, they had like it was white supremacy. I'm like, what the hell? I'm looking at black people doing this. Yeah, last summer, I think when it was the big um, Stop Asian Hate, I mean, there was every video I saw was not not a white guy doing it. Right. Um, and I didn't understand it. Um, 
and it's it's a it's a weird thing. So you wonder why the media would like even bother lying about. I think the media is so afraid of saying, "Hey, well, you know, this person is, you know, not white. They did something bad, but we're afraid of also being called racist." Yeah. So they make excuses when it's just like you said, though it's not people aren't born with you know original sin, in my opinion, and just because you're born a certain color doesn't mean you're going to be a bad person or that you should get a pass for being a bad person, but somewhere that stopped happening. Yeah. And that's why you have the mess you have now. What is it? Why are people afraid of words? When I was growing up, it was clear. The adults would teach us sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt me. Why are people afraid of words? Especially like one word control white, most white people, not all. And that word is racism. What is it about words that make people afraid? I think it really, people started to really get afraid. It was when those words were weaponized and people started losing their jobs. Yeah. People started getting, uh, you know, having real world consequences for these things, even when they weren't accurate. Um, I, I remember there was a story of like an elect, remember with the OK hand symbol? There was like an electrician that did that and got fired because. <laughs> You know, they call them a white supremacist or yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think that that has died off a little bit, but I think people got really, really afraid because once you got that label, um, people on the internet would use it to destroy your life. And I've always said that you look a lot of these, um, for example, like a, a right leaning figures, Gina Carano, for example, the actress, these people didn't want her off the internet. They wanted her dead. Yeah. You yeah. know, like it was not, and it was because, of a few words she said. So I, I don't know when it escalated so much. Uh, I don't know why people got, got so sensitive. Um, I think maybe it has something to do with kids growing up now and not having any real, a lot, like, a, like a lot of real problems. It's pretty easy to be a kid nowadays. Yeah. You know, they have iPhones, they have, you know, all this, you know, everything. No, no kids are working. We're around me. None of the kids are working. You know, when I was 14, I had my parents drive me to the city hall to get a work permit so I could yep. go get a job so I could get money. Yeah. Not a single kid around, like my friend's kids, they don't work. They say, I work hard. I want my kid hard to work hard. I'm like, okay, well, don't complain when your kids, you know, doesn't know the value of money, doesn't, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think it, the parents are too damn soft, I think. Absolutely, man. I saw, I heard a report today. I didn't see the report that there are thousands of young men that are not working. They don't want to work. They sit behind mm -hmm. a computer all day and hide and do things, crazy things, and they just don't want to work. And yet the parents are taking care of them for the most part. Yeah, that's a dangerous, dangerous thing. I think for parents, it's almost as bad as not being around at all because you're giving them a safety net to be unproductive. And when they need to be productive at some point, yeah, uh, they're yeah. not going to know how they're not going to know, um, you know, how to pay, work and deal with the, you know, um, you saw these people from Twitter getting laid off over the last couple of days. Yeah. Are they tripping they're, out? Yeah. And they're right. They're, tri they're writing 500 word essays about how, you know, it's like, are you, are you kidding me? I've been fired. Everyone that I know has been fired plenty of times. It's yeah. not a big deal. Right. You get after it, you go get another job. But yeah. these people are, they don't even know how to handle it. And it, it's got to come from uh, their parents be, like coddling them their whole lives. I totally agree. When I was growing up, I don't know a day when I wasn't either responsible, had some type of responsibility at home. And then when I got old enough to go out and work, I worked. And they prepared me to leave home at 18. You're a grown mm -hmm. man now. You're out of here. And I used to ask my grandparents, they're like, okay, at 18, you're out of here. And I'm down in Alabama on a plantation, right? And I'm yeah. like, well, where am I going? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. You're just out of here. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> yeah. and so when I turned 18, I was prepared to take care of myself. I was ready to leave home. And I left home at 18 to have a look back. Yeah, I, I think that that, I mean, that's where I was at too. I had an allowance. It was like three bucks a week. I had to do a bunch of chores to get it. Yeah. The second I could get a job washing dishes, I did because I, my parents worked, worked, but you know, if I wanted something outside of getting fed and whatever, I had to work for it. Yes. And I, I, I'm so grateful that my parents were, were like that. A lot of people complain, but 
man, when I was 18, I was ready to go. I had a savings account. I yeah. had a, a decent job. I had, I actually had vacation. Like I had a couple of vacation days stacked up at work. I had a car. It wasn't great, but it ran. It got That's back, right. You know? So, and then I, I didn't move out until I was 20 because I was going to, I went to community college in the same town, but my parents made me pay rent, yeah. for, you know, and they made me pay for, so you know, and, and that turned me into the man I am today. I have a work ethic and it's because they didn't let me sit around and do nothing. Do you have fear? Yeah. More of it as I get older. And what, what are you afraid of? Not finishing my work. Like not, I feel like there's a fight that I'm trying to fight with the content that I create. And I, I fear having that taken away from me, getting deplatformed. Oh, I see. Um, you know, st stuff like that. Now, as, as I get older, obviously mortality is a thing. Um, so I, I think about that kind of stuff, right. but I think about, you know, not doing enough or not having a chance to feel like, okay, I can walk away from this. Now it's in a state where I feel it's, you know, good. Uh, what was your purpose of starting your YouTube channel? It was because, uh, I had always created videos to help people. I used to do videos about like repairing computers or remote control cars. Oh. But the, the reason I got into political commentary is because of this incident where I was playing this card game. It was, it's called Magic the Gathering. It's a card game. It's been around forever. Um, it's like chess plus math kind of. But um, the, the community had like canceled. I got canceled for some opinion. I don't even remember what it was. It was so long ago. But I remember feeling like, I don't understand. These, they're saying these things to me that are calling me these things. I don't really understand. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of got trial by fire. You know, I, I learned about all the lessons that we learned that we know now, right? Like never apologize because it, they don't want, it doesn't help. They, you, they, you think apologize is going to work, but they don't want that. You know, so I made the apology video where I was like, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I offended you. And then that wasn't enough. Right. And so I learned the hard way about uh, this like cancel culture. It was in the early days of it, really, of the online cancel culture. I learned the hard way. I did everything wrong. And then I, 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 I was just left kind of with feeling like I didn't have a voice. So then I started making videos about, about this kind of stuff and defending people who are getting canceled and trying to understand, you know, why. Uh, you know, people on the internet want to ruin other people's lives because they said something they don't like. I still don't understand it. So I'm, that's why I'm still working. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I read online that you have a, on several occasions directed followers to harass your enemies online. And uh, is that, have you done that? Of course not. No. You have not done that? No. Nice. No. That the, I think that the people that write that, what happens is just like you, ha you make a video, right? If somebody says something like Jesse Lee Peterson is whatever, whatever, and you want right. to respond to that. Yeah. Okay. And your, and your viewers who are free thinkers and, and are, have their own individual responsibility, go to that person and say, Hey, I disagree with you. Um, and I, and then they'll say, Oh, well, Jesse Lee Peterson sent his followers. I feel like no matter how big or small a channel is, like I'm going to clap back. If somebody says something uh, derogatory about me, they're a journalist or they're whatever, I'm making a response video. And, you know, it wasn't a big deal when I was a smaller channel, but as I got right. bigger, now it's like, oh, well, hundreds of his viewers came over and called me an idiot. Well, maybe <laughs> keep my name out of your mouth then. Or maybe like, maybe don't lie about me. So yeah, I've never... I've never, ever in, uh, intentionally uh, wanted people to go there. I've gotten better about trying to be a little clearer when I'm talking about stuff. You know, you have some, even though I don't feel like you have a real responsibility to it, I try to be like, hey, guys, you know, don't, you know, you're not doing me any favors if you go and you, you know, call this person an idiot right. or whatever. Yeah. But people are going to do what they want to do. And I'm not do their mom. It, that's right. So, you can't yeah, do anything about that. No, they're, they're always going to do it. And I don't think that that's a good enough reason to just let people lie on you. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I've always, I've always thought to myself, or I've always defended myself against that kind of stuff. What do you think about Elon Musk now that he's bought Twitter and 
and, and they're trying to destroy him now. They're really going after him. Yeah. Uh, what's your opinion about that? Do you think he will succeed at this? And will it become, quote unquote, fair balance? I think he will absolutely 100% succeed. I, I, you know, I think that maybe he and I would define success differently, but I think he will. Uh, I think he's got a proven track record of, you know, running pretty, you know, yeah. pretty big, com pretty successful companies. Yeah. The guy puts spaceships in space and lands them on boats in the ocean. <laughs> pretty sure he can handle a stupid social media. I agree. You know, I think what's been great about it is exposing, uh, just like you said, everyone's coming after him. It's, I mean, quite frankly, it's the Democrat, Democrats or people in government and the mainstream media. Yeah. And by their by them attacking him like they are, but oh, advertisers need to drop him. This set and the other. They're trying to cripple him because they know that Twitter was always a very valuable tool for them to spread their their message. Yeah. Um, and now that it's privately owned, they can't do that. I think you're really seeing the flailing, the, the kind of the desperate attacks. Um, because they know that. Because Twitter, in my opinion, is always has always been um uh skewed to the left yeah has always unfairly penalized right-leaning content creators and i believe has pushed via their trending tab whatever issues they think are important if you go on twitter and it's like oh it's always the same like woke crap on the on the right side what's whatever's trending i'm like there's no way 200 million people are talking about this this isn't news um so i think twitter really did its part to try to do be social justice -y and instead of just being a platform. So I think Elon will definitely succeed in removing that. I think he'll add a lot of features to it. Will he be able to fight against, you know, the entire establishment? That's the, that's the fight. The technology part of it, I think he's going to be fine. Yeah. But once, you know, once all the hit pieces start, you know, keep coming out, I mean, just look at it now. They're coming out 20 at a time. It's amazing, man. I can't. Yeah. It, it seems as though a man like Elon Musk and Donald Trump, they don't mm -hmm. seem to have fear. And if you don't have fear, there's no way you could be stopped at anything that you do. But if you have fear, then you can be controlled if you have fear. Yeah, that's, I think that's fair. Elon definitely does not fear anything. Now, having, you know, $200 billion in your pocket does help reduce <laughs> fear a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, I think that you're right. I mean, I think that that's one of the things that attracted a lot of voters to Trump, for example, the first time he ran. Right. Like, he didn't give a crap. He was like, whatever, you know, and he, he'd be on national TV and call Rosie O'Donnell a fat pig. You know, like <laughs> to, you wouldn't see that coming out of a, a, a president now. Um, but you, what makes them good can make them bad. When you don't have fear, then you, you make more mistakes. Um, Fear can be guiding, I think, as long as it's well managed. But um, a guy like Elon doesn't—he really doesn't care. Like yeah. he went into Twitter, he fired four thousand people, he fired another three thousand people on Monday, twelve hundred people last night. <laughs> Everyone's talking about how Twitter's going to fit. You know, Twitter's been working fine all day. So I have no idea what these people were doing. Yeah, I can't imagine, and I don't know what's going to happen with Twitter, but I can't imagine anyone will honestly think that Elon Musk is going to fail at Twitter. And, and, and they have to not know his history for them to be thinking that, or they're just outright lying to themselves, trying to make themselves believe and hope that he won't make it. I can't, I can't imagine one thinking that he wants to see at this. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, I 100% agree with that. I, I tweeted out earlier today something like, these people are either total morons or willingly lying. Yeah. Like, Twitter's going to be the easiest thing Elon Musk has ever done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, he, he's got Tesla. He's got, he's sending spaceships to space and right. landing them back. Put up Starlink. I'm talking to you via Starlink right now. Cause I live in the country and I, I, so like the, yeah, the idea that he's not going to succeed at a stupid computer app is insane, <laughs> but there's like hundreds of thousands of people on Twitter who are like, Oh my God, Twitter's going to die any day. Now it's all over. It's like, no. I don't have, I, I just like you, I'm baffled yeah. as to why they would think that. I have seen even so-called experts saying that. And I'm like, these experts are totally lying. They're trying to deceive because they don't like much. They, they don't want this to work. There's no way they, they believe that it's not going to work. 
Yeah, I think I think I agree. It's like they're trying to will it into existence by yeah. saying, "Oh my God, a, a bunch of you know people got fired from Twitter. It's definitely going to fail now." They're going to be saying this like they said it when they first laid off three thousand people. Then they said it again when he laid off the right. three thousand contract workers. Then they yeah. said it again last night. It's like at some point, you know, they're running around like Chicken Little, yeah. um, and the app just keeps working. I I have real big questions on what the heck these thousands of people were doing every day yeah. at that place. If I were an investor and I had been giving them my money all these years, I'd be like, wait a minute, you fired 7,000 people out of 11,000 and everything's still functioning. <laughs> yeah. What the, you know, that's like, a good point, man. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. If they didn't believe Musk was going to work, this is going to work. They wouldn't be trying to stop him. They would just go their way, go by their business and let Musk mm -hmm. have a little fun with his little toy. But they don't really believe that. Also, I heard, I don't know how true it is, but uh, there's some saying that he's going to be, uh, Twitter be, will become an alternative to you, YouTube as well. Yeah, that's high on his list is to bring um, long form monetized videos, which I think is a great idea. I mean, I can't believe Twitter didn't do it 100 years ago when, you know, I'm right. Look how big TikTok is. Um, and those videos aren't even monetized. And it's uh and many people believe that app is not good for this country. Uh the FTC is having discussions about banning it. So I mean, think about that. They ban TikTok and Twitter has that ability ready to go. I yeah. mean, it would be it would be a home run for them. So I, yeah, I think, yeah, the, the video I think would be great. And I think they would be honestly YouTube's number two competitor immediately. Yeah. All they have to do is allow us to upload the videos and monetize it. It would be instant. Amazing. Are you a smart person? I noticed a lot of white men are smart. Uh, I don't, I think I'm okay. I think I, uh, I think um, I'm, uh, I'm good at problem solving, but I'm not very smart, like traditionally book smart, I don't think. Right. Well, that's good. You, know? you don't need to be that. Yeah, I think I'm more street smart. Yeah. I think I know where people are coming from and I can relate to people and where they're at. Um, because I've been working my whole life. Right. You meet a lot of people when you work your whole life and you've seen a lot of stuff. And I, I've seen a lot of stuff in my 39 years that I'm not really surprised by a lot anymore. Are you known for the statement, get woke or go broke? That is a statement that uh, I am known for, yeah. And what does that mean? Um, well, essentially when a company gets woke, like, you know, when they virtue signal and all this kind of stuff, you go broke. You, you, you alienate half of your customer base. Right. I, I never really understood that. I know it works for some brands. It obviously must. Um, but the idea that, you know, when, when, uh, you know, Starbucks says, oh, well, we're not going to have Merry Christmas on our things. Cause they're going to, you know, like when they make statements like that, yeah. all you do is make customers leave. Like they're not, you know, and so I think that corporations, you know, they all, they all said, uh, you know, Nike says black lives matter, but they still make their te their tennis shoes and sweatshops and stuff like that. It's all anybody who's actually paying attention uh, knows that when these companies start virtue signaling like that and pushing that kind of stuff, that they're really just hiding stuff. They're yeah. they're they're trying to hide all that. And so I, it is more of a, a hope when companies decide to turn against their customers that I that I uh, that they go broke because they should they should just sell the coffee. Or you should just sell the hot dog, or you should just make your t-shirts, or you should. There's this era where brands have to tell people what they believe in politically right. is insane to me. I there don't care. Is. Make a t-shirt, make the hoodie that I like, and shut up. Right. And um, that that's and so many brands have been alienated. There are things in life that it's difficult to boycott everything. You know, you can't always say, like, oh, well, gosh, you know these paper plates are made in China, but I can't afford, so you can't make decisions like that on everything. But when I see a company say, you know, a, a white men are holding people back or they do something like that. It's like, okay, well, I can buy a hoodie from anybody. <laughs> I can buy, you know, I can buy socks from anybody. Yeah. So if you buy, you know, so I try to, I hope that people who watch my videos kind of make the same little decisions every day in life too, just to kind of say, you know what? All right. I'll buy my socks from somebody who just doesn't care about anything. Just wants to make right. good socks. Absolutely. Um, the, the, uh, the term woke, why do they call themselves woke when they're really 
asleep. They cannot see. They are not. A, why do yeah. they call themselves woke? They shouldn't be calling themselves sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I also think people that that are woke are some of the most racist people I've ever seen. There's some of the the people that there's this weird, um, uh, like attitude that they have about well anybody who's not white really they treat them like they can't fend for themselves yeah and they need protection yeah they have the white savior complex and <laughs> I don't know about you but I can't think of anything more racist than thinking oh yo you're black well let me help you you know I'm white you're black. how can I help you like I. Or to say like, oh, well, he's black, so he needs extra this or extra that. That's a completely racist. Yeah. So I, I think that the, um, you know, the the woke thing is like, maybe it started in the black community. It probably did. And when it like actually meant something, but then like many things, it was co-opted by white women. Yeah. And, uh, and they're the ones that are truly, I think, doing more damage um, by telling groups of people that. You know, no matter what you do, no matter, you know, you're always going to be under the white man's thumb. You're always going to be. It's no wonder that people grow up and don't want to try if that's the kind that's of messaging right. that they're getting. Absolutely. You know, you make a very interesting point. I, I don't know how the blacks put up with the catering that they get because and this is on both sides. I would be insulted. Yeah. The conservative and liberals, the Republicans and the Democrats do the same thing with the blacks. I, yeah. I, there's these shows I watch sometimes, and I notice whenever they have, with the conservative, whenever they have black guests on the show, they're yeah. like, oh, the yeah, black. They do love their, yeah, yeah. they love oh. their token their token black person who's a conservative, they, you know? Yeah, yeah, they like, I'm like, shut up. It's just yeah. a person. It's just the same as it would be anyone. But even the conservative treat the black like they just licking their boots, man, to... And I don't know yeah, why the blacks would want to be treated that way because it looked like you can't do for yourself. You like you soft toilet paper or something. Yeah, I mean, well, look what they do to you know black Republican politicians. Yeah, you know, they they try to remove their blackness. You know, yeah. they'll question their blackness, and you know that comes from the black community, not the white community. Um, who is the guy in California? Um, uh, Larry Elder. Larry, you know, yeah. like. This dude is, the, you know what I mean? He's real as it gets, but the, you know, so I, I don't, I don't understand why they put up with it. I think it must be people who are opportunistic and are okay with it and are, are looking to advance their career. I, I feel like people are smart and they would know that they're being tokenized, which yeah. is what they, you know, they would know that. I think that Republicans are really like, Oh, we've got to get, um, we, if we put a bunch of, we bring black people on then people can't call us racist. Yeah. yeah. You know, we do, you know, and so they overcompensate yeah. um, rather than just worrying about getting the right people on for the, it's like, um, there's this thing in the conservative space too. Um, I don't know when it started, probably 2018, 2019. Suddenly there was all these like beautiful conservative women and they were like rising to the top. And I was like, oh, they're just models. They're, they're not really conservative. They're yeah. just, they're just uh, pretending to be because it's an opportunity. So I, I don't know even who to trust anymore, right. really. I just try to take them at their word and, yeah. and try to figure out if they're full of it or not. That's right. You, um, um, yeah, man, it hasn't, I want you to know that it hasn't always been that way. When I was growing I'm older than Israel. Did I tell you that? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Israel was created, I just found this out today. Israel was created in 1948. Okay. And I was born in 1949. So I didn't know. I thought I was older than dirt, but I didn't know I was older than a country. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, Jess, you look good, though. You're, you're holding it together, all right? <laughs> oh, black don't crack. I heard. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope this is true. In 2020, you would drop from some of your sponsors I've been tweeting all lives matter and other mm -hmm. conservative statement pretending, uh, pertaining to black lives matter protests is right. Is that true? Yeah, there were some, there were some tweets that did not. Yeah. There were some sponsors that left Good when for I you, said man. that. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Right yeah. on. I, um, there's certain things that I just, man, I just can't take the, like, 
I, I wish that everyone would look at their own community and try to like, you know, tweeting stuff on, on, on Twitter is fine, but like, man, like I keep getting told that I need to, that it's community, that this problems in certain communities are my fault. And I was like, I'm not even a part of that community. How am I supposed to fix it? Yeah, How right. am I responsible for it? Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I'm just a guy. Um, and, uh, you got half the media saying, well, you're the, you're the reason people that look like you, you're the reason it's like, dude, I don't want anybody to get, you know, have gang violence affect their life. I don't care what color they are. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so stupid. And the, yeah, the whole black lives matter thing was just plus, Oh my God, who didn't know, who didn't know that the organization was going to turn out to be uh, a total scam, yeah. you know, like all the money they took all the tens of millions of dollars that disappeared and their, their founder moved into a, a 99.7 white neighborhood. Uh, Patrice Cullors. The hog. <laughs> yeah. Right. She took all that money. She moved to a white neighborhood. I don't know what she's done for the black community, but profited. So, so I wonder if all, if black lives matter, once you got all that money, why did she move into the hood? That's a good question. You know? Do the work where the where the be where the people are. Right. Go help, Why are you yeah. gonna go and move into the enemy's neighborhood? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In their yeah. mind. But I do want to tell you that when I was growing up, it wasn't like this for the blacks. Blacks were independent individual thinkers. They worked for themselves. Uh, they have families. Families. It was an embarrassment to get a woman pregnant out of wedlock. They would have to go in hiding. Um, and and. When I was growing up in Alabama on the plantation, that was the, the uh, Jim Crow law existed, mm. but it didn't hold us back at all. And mm. because we knew that the Jim Crow law was about the Democratic Party not wanting blacks to be a part of the Democratic Party. And that's why the Republican Party was started by blacks and whites, because blacks were not allowed into the Democratic Party. And so black people knew for the most part, not all, not all, but most knew that it was a spiritual battle, a warfare between good and evil, and it had nothing to do with color or, mm. or male or female. So we, they bought land. They had, they had businesses. They were moving on with their lives. They were not thinking about somebody can hold me back. And they did not have the group mentality like blacks have today, most blacks have today. They into the color thing, and they into a group. Yeah. And if you, if you join a group, you lose your identity. But if you stand as an individual, you maintain your uh, uh, identity and you do what you want in life without somebody holding you back. Yeah, I think, I mean, that is, I, I think that there needs to be, like collectivism is bad in almost all forms. And yeah. I think that it, it starts with, you know, families, fathers staying in the home. Um, yeah. and, and really it c comes back to individual responsibility. You have a kid, now you stay and you take care of that kid. So the kid doesn't grow up on the streets with bad influences, you know, and it's just, it, these things are so simple yeah. and backed up by data, but nobody can say it. Yeah. You know, nobody says what is so obvious. If you have 15 kids from 11 different moms, how are you going to be a dad? That's right. You know, As a matter you can of be fact, a, it was known that Black Lives Matter was against the nuclear family. They, yes. They, they, against the nuclear family, they admitted to being Marxists. Mm -hmm. They admitted to all the wrong things, and yet they were allowed to get away with uh, uh, the insurrection upon this country like that. Yeah, it was really, it was really, um, you know how, I mean, you've been around longer than me. Longer I'm sure than you Israel. Can, yeah, right. So I, I. I think you could probably relate, but have you ever, you know, you, you see something and you just know it's BS Yeah. and then it just plays out anyway. And you, so when, when everyone was donating all these, um, racially guilty white people were donating money to, I'm like that those monies aren't going to go to the streets. Right. That money's not going to help black businesses. That money's not going to help, uh, rebuild churches, which does help keep families together. It's not going to help do any of this stuff. It's just going to enrich five or 10 people. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And everyone forgot about it. Yeah. Are they investigating that Patrice Colors? No. She's got three, four, five homes. Nobody cares because they got to feel like they like um like they could go tell all their other white liberals like that that they gave money to help the black community. 
What a mess. And so are you a Republican? Uh, will you, I, I will voted, you vote and stuff? Do you tend to vote Republican? I voted, uh, yeah, I'd say, I mean, like I vote, I voted always. I've only voted three times, four times. And I've, it's been a uh, independent, a Republican and a Democrat. Yeah. So I don't, I lean conservative, but I don't always vote Republican. Oh, okay. I was, um, when I moved out here to California, I became a, a Democrat because mm -hmm. all the blacks were doing it and I didn't know it better. I was young. And, um, but when God forgave me and changed my heart from anger to love, I, I uh, went and read the platform of the Democratic Party, and nothing was about God. It wasn't about God, family, or constitution, or freedom, or anything. And I noticed that they had no respect for black people at all. They felt like, and still do, that black people can't make it in life. They need to welfare. They need them, the Democratic Party. Well, that's how you Hey, that's how you secure votes. Right. You know, it's about control, right? Keep Absolutely. Them, so, uh, here's some free handouts. If you don't vote for us, this other guy's going to take them away. I know. You don't want that to happen. Yeah. So I went and asked God. I'm like, God, you changed my heart. And I really appreciate that, but I need one more favor. And he's like, well, what is it? And I said, well, you changed my heart, and, and I can no longer identify with the Democratic platform. Can you forgive me for being a Democrat, right? And he was like, yeah, sure. And so, I, <laughs> yeah, that's an easy thing to forgive. That's yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> and so I read the platform of the Republican Party. And it was about God, country, constitution, freedom, and mm -hmm. those type of things. So I saw I voted Republican. But the, now the the Republican Party is starting to look like the Democratic Party. So that's I, a I don't concern. know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that's how I feel too. I feel a little concerned with the Republicans. They've got away from the core traditional values. Um, and I'm not sure either. I, I'm not sure, you know, who's going to even run now in 2024. Yeah. Um, Trump's there, but I'm sure others will run. Uh, yeah, I feel the same. The yeah. Republican party is, is kind of in a transition right now yeah. and they need to, they need to rededicate themselves to, you know, kind of what made them Republicans in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, you know, well, the, uh, great white hope has announced that he's going to run. So. I'm definitely for him. I yeah, let, yeah. Let's see what he has to say today. Okay. For every one new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. Nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watched his, um, did you watch his speech on Thursday? I did. I, I thought it was good. Yeah. People said it was low energy. I didn't no. get that. No, me I thought either. it was just measured, yeah. you know, and he's got a, I think he's got a, He's got an uphill battle. Oh, he's yeah. He's got to stay away. Like, if he just doesn't talk about the election, I think that would be... He's got to be careful about giving the left as much ammo as he did last time. Like, don't talk about the last election. Just focus on the issues. Focus about how terrible this country's been in the last two years yeah. and how great it was the previous four. And I think he's got a fair shot. Well, he's um, a smart man. He, he He's already been there in government. He knows now where everything how everything goes. And yeah. so I don't believe he would get into it if he didn't think he had a chance to win. Cause he understand the hell he's going to have to deal with. Whether you say this or don't say it or act a certain way or don't act. They don't, the right old Republicans don't want him there. They rather really yeah. have that guy in Florida because he could be controlled rather than Donald Sure Trump. seems like it. Yeah. A lot of people say that a lot of people say that about him yeah. is that he's a rhino too. And that he's, people are suspicious of DeSantis. Um, and I understand that at least we know what you're going to get with Trump. Yeah. Um, you're going to get a guy that really does love this country. Yes. And I think he really does want to do best for this. What's best for the country. And that, like, it sounds crazy, but Hey, it'd be nice to have a president who cared about this country more yes. than every other country on the planet, you know? So what America that, first. It, yeah. That, that was, that was why I voted for him in 2016. No more foreign wars, America first, yeah. secure our borders, you know, help with the none of these presidents want to talk about all these people on these pills the country has a massive problem with pills illegal Democrats want to aliens do nothing about it. everywhere you see all those illegal aliens coming in 
I like, what do you think about them shipping them up to Kamala Harris's house? And I putting love them that. On? <laughs> that made my day. I ate some cake and ice cream on that day when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said they'd, they'd sent 50 more, so you should send 5,000. Yes. Let them see what a real what it's really like on Absolutely, the border. Absolutely, man. Amazing. I want to ask you about um, the um, men. I noticed that, well, I, we kind of already touched on this, but... Men are not men anymore. Mm. You know, they don't, they're afraid of women. They're afraid of life. They can't speak up. When they're riding in the car with a the woman, they're sitting in the woman's seat and she's driving. I noticed that a lot. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and when I drive up now and I see a man sitting in the woman's seat and the woman is driving, automatically I, I go, beta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I do too. I don't know what it is, but every time I see some dude, in the passenger seat, I'm, yeah, yeah, it doesn't look right. It, it doesn't look right, man, because mm. it's not right. It's not normal. Yeah, what I would think it that, take to turn them around? Well, I think what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a lot of men alone, childless, yeah, womanless in their 40s and 50s, and because. You've got a whole generation of men who are, like you said, literally afraid to talk to women. Yeah. They spend their time online all day. They don't even know how to talk to people yeah. in general. Yeah. So there's two options for a lot of these guys. Hookup culture, so they can go get herpes or something with these apps, uh, or be single. And I see it. A lot of male friends of mine in their late 30s are just, they're just dipping out of the game. They're not yeah. gay. They're just, ah, I'm not. Nah, right. I'm cool. Yeah. I got I've got all the free time I want. I've got all the money I want. Um, and there's more and more of that. Yeah. And yeah. uh I think you're gonna have a kind of a reckoning here in the next 10 years where a lot of these guys end up now they're 50 and now they're like, dang. Yeah, you know, I'm alone. It's sad um, too, man, because yeah. the order of God is God in Christ, Christ and man, man over woman and woman over children. And and just as the man the Christ to be his example to lead him. Women need men to lead them and to be that example, even in, especially in the home with raising children and things like that. And by attacking men and, and destroying them in this matter, where this happening in the home or where you're really setting the world up, the country up to be destroyed because men were created to lead and not to follow. They, yeah, they, well, they also attack traditional femininity too, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the use in the, I mean, there, I saw a chart once basically where like women were never happier than in the fifties and sixties staying at home and yes. being a housewife. Yeah. It's not, I mean, so I don't understand. You're going to end up by the way, similarly with a whole generation of bitter alone women yep. uh, who are going to point the finger at everyone else uh, and say, well, or you see all these career women who are like, oh man, I, boy, I've really got a great career, but I have no kids and I have yeah. no family. I have nothing. And they're too old now. Yeah. Um, I hear that I, a lot already, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's, it's true. I mean, I, I'm, there's a shocking amount of fr friends of mine in their late thirties and early forties that are still single. They have good jobs. They have good earning jobs, no kids, no prospects. And it's just, um, it seems that when we look at the data and when people were really happy, you know, I feel like these women are going to feel like they were lied to. Yeah. They're going to say, wait a minute. I thought yeah. this is what I was supposed to want, but man, sure is kind of crappy going to work every day and, uh, <laughs> you know, right. ha and, and having to, you know, come home and, and also take care of stuff around the house. And it's just, it's, I think there's going to be a pushback in the next generation to traditionalism and to where that will be, that will be, uh, looked upon fondly again too. Yeah. I work with a lot of women in my nonprofit and our primary purpose is to rebuild the family by rebuilding a man. But mm -hmm. I work with a lot of women. We have women's forums and things like that. And a lot of women are starting to wake up and they realize already they've been lied to. They thought mm -hmm. career was more important than being married and having a family. They thought having children and still going to work was more important. And now that they're waking up, they can't believe that they were blinded like that and 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 now that they're waking up and coming to order, they love they love being wives. They love being at home with their children. They are not in competition with these crazy women that want to go out there and work and 
care about their ego more than they do their children. Yeah, I think that a lot of that is linked to consumerism too. Yeah. So they told the women to go out and get a job. Why? So they could pay more taxes, so they can buy more stuff. Yeah. You look at a lot of people um, in this country, most people live in a house that is probably too big for them. Yes. And they're driving in a car that is probably too expensive for them. And they have a cell phone that's too expensive for them. And so what does that do? That creates the need for two incomes. Yeah. Back then, you didn't have all this stuff where people were getting buried in debt. And now it's like they tricked us. They tricked the family to where, yep. you know, the, the, um, it was a proud moment for me when I got to tell my wife she could retire. Right on. But up until that point, we both needed to work Yeah. because we both went to college and we both, uh, you know, had cars and we had a house that was five bedrooms and we had no kids. So we created all this debt. That meant we both had to work. And then you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm almost 40. I've done nothing with my life except for work and buy stuff. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are like that. So I think there needs to be a return to live within or even below your means and not to find happiness through stuff, yes. but in the people around you. Even with all the stuff and people around you and all that, you know, like so-called friends and living in certain neighborhoods and doing it. You still don't have peace because stuff just brings you a momentary uh, excitement for a moment. And after a while, you look at it and it's just stuff laying there on the table, right? With no meaning. And then you go after, out and buy something else to make yourself feel good. And that disappears as, as well. Yeah. Well, and it keeps happening quicker and quicker. So yeah. you have to buy more and buy more. Yeah. And um, I think that that was, you know, I don't get too much into the, you know, or the theory of overarching evil, but. Uh, it feels like that was on purpose yes. that they wanted to make people work so that they could buy more stuff so they could pay more taxes. And people are, I would argue less happy now than, I mean, I'm, I haven't been around as long as Israel, but <laughs> people sure seemed a lot happier in the nineties. They were man. Yeah. 100%. I mean like race relations, yeah. race relations seem better in the nineties than they do now, 30 yes. years later. Yeah. Now, maybe maybe it's just because of the way things are reported. Like, again, I, no, I'm telling I'm not... you, you're right about that. I, okay. When I was growing yeah. up, man, in Alabama, on a plantation, it was mm. much better than, than the race relation was much better than, I mean, it was a difference than night and day. What is going on now? And they lie about those days. They tell you, oh, really bad. Black people were enslaved and they were under Jim Crow. The worst thing that ever happened to blacks other than abortion was the so-called civil rights movement. Were you mm. aware of that? It was <clears> the <throat> worst thing that ever happened to blacks. Mm. It Why was do you worse say that? than slavery. Why Be do you say that? Because I, I'm just educate me, yeah. Because prior to the so-called civil rights movement, as I said earlier, black people fought for themselves. They did for themselves. They would never put another man over them, especially men. They would never have a physical leader. God was their leader. They, uh, they would never depend on the government. I didn't even know the government existed until I moved to the inner cities. Uh, huh. And so, but when the civil rights movement came along, they made up this crap about, oh, black people are slaves, black people are this. And they made the blacks think that we are here to help you. We are here to save you from the white man. We're here to give you freedom when it really was a socialist movement in order to right, control right. the blacks. And Martin Luther King and all those people set themselves up as the leaders of the blacks. And they sold the blacks to the Democratic Party for a government mm. check. And it's just been downhill because blacks stopped thinking for themselves. They got into color. They start to blame. And they have not recovered from that. They've gotten worse. Yeah, it sure seems. And again, I, I say this as a white guy who lives in the middle of the country. It is rare that I see anybody who is black. So I understand, like, understand my, you know, I'm not, but I'm an outsider. But it it sure seems like uh, it's time for some kind of change yes. in that community. Um, when you look at, and this is one of the most dangerous lines to go down, is statistics. And you look at who is hurting blacks black the black community more than anyone else you know it's you start looking at stuff they're it's hurting the each blacks. other yeah that yeah i mean it's but no black life matter show up nothing and blacks are killing one another they're killing children they're robbing and raping and carrying on in their yeah. own communities 
And instead of going down there and saying, hey, black lives matter, they go to the white people because the white people had the money, and they said black lives matter, okay. Yeah, right, and nothing's gotten any better. Right. Chicago's still, I wouldn't go to Chicago anymore. I used to go there a lot in the 2000, early 2000s, but now, yeah. no way. Like, I won't no go way. to Ireland, I'm black. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's for a different reason, probably. But the, yeah, the I, I mean, I see this stuff. Like, I mean, how do you not? I see people going into these stores and just stealing stuff and yep. walking out. The lawlessness. Um, it, it's it's I, I, obviously every. It's just still it comes down to individual decisions. Nobody's makes you commit crimes because you're poor. This is one of the that's biggest right. BS arguments I've ever heard. Um, it, that. That's just such a cop out. Oh, it's a poor community. They, there's, so what? That doesn't. you right. That doesn't man. make you go stab people. That doesn't make you go rob people. That doesn't make you. It doesn't excuse it. It might be a factor. When I was but, growing um, up, man, you're so right. I I lived in a tin roof house. When it would rain, you could hear the rain pounding on the tin top, right? Yeah. And and my bathroom was outdoors. We had an outdoors toilet. I okay, worked in yeah. cotton fields. I did those things. And not once did it ever occur to me to go steal something. You know, it just, so it's not true, man. Poverty doesn't cause you to steal. The lack of character causes that to happen. Yeah. I, yeah. And there's, a, I've seen plenty of really poor neighborhoods that were not robbing each other. Right. Yeah. You have some element to it. You know, you got one or two people who are trouble or whatever, but I, you know, I lived in, in, in lower middle class neighborhoods my whole life, and people weren't breaking into each other's houses and stealing from them. Yeah, it just right. wasn't the case, you know. I got a so other so many other things I wanted to talk to you about, man. But the time has gone by. I got to mm. throw you on the hot seat, and okay. I, and I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. All right. Okay. All right. The hot seat. Do you love white people? Yes. Is, uh, are you the head of your wife? Yes. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? Yes. Do we need more white babies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> did you know that we celebrate White History Month in July? I did not know that. Yeah, I started it five years ago. And, oh. And so it, this, we just celebrate last July our fifth year. And the yeah, reason right. I started it in July because July just feels white. It does feel white. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True or false, abortion is worse than slavery. Oh, that's hard. Uh, true. Have you ever told someone how the cow ate the cabbage? I have not. Did Big Mama Michelle Obama eat up all the ribs? I assume yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it okay to call a woman fat? Yes. Does a chicken have lips? No. Did the bear shit in the woods? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you alpha male or beta male? Alpha male. Did you have fun? A lot, yes. Thank you, man, for coming on. That was amazing. I appreciate it. Thank tell you. the folks Thank how to, tell the folks how to get to your the work sure. you're doing your site whatever you want to put out there. Uh, you can find me. I'm the quartering one word on YouTube or Twitter, or I'm also on uh, locals just like Jesse at thequartering.locals.com. And uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate you having me on. I've had I, this is a fun talk for me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. One other quick question, I think maybe a follow up. Do you have anger? No. Nice. Amazing. <laughs> Well, thank you, man. I totally, totally enjoyed it. I wish you well. You too, Jesse. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Remember that the Father's State is now on Locals.com. So click the link in the description to support our work. Follow and all that good stuff. All right. I do appreciate it. Um, ring the bell. Check out our merch. We have amazing Christmas merch. Christmas is coming. Jingle bell, right? So check out the merch and let us hear from you. I do appreciate you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.